So I started posting on my socials like, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter that I have finished installing Windows 11. And then after that, a lot of people started asking me on how did I manage to install the leaked version of Windows 11. Well, uh, I guess instead of answering them one by one, I would just make a video, right? So here we are. I'm going to teach you guys on how you can install the leaked ISO slash image file of the Windows 11. This is probably a developer build and not like an actual beta build that you should actually install in your main system. So, this is my suggestion. You're gonna partition your disk drive and you're not gonna ruin any of your system files or programs in your current hard drive right now. You don't need another hard drive. You just need to partition your hard drive. Anyways, I'll be teaching you that in the next few minutes in this video, but you would need two USB drive. Um, if you want to do it quickly, but if you don't, you know, having one is all right. You just have to rewrite the ISO image. Anyway, let's go into my desktop. Oh, and yeah, by the way, I forgot to tell you guys that all links that you would need would be on the description down below. And if it gets taken down, feel free to message me on my Discord server or at me on Twitter or something. And by the way, if you do have any suggestions and programs that I should run on Windows 11, if you just want to know if it's compatible already before you actually started updating, then feel free to tag me on Twitter. I'll be posting stuff there uh, at Alan Avila underscore. So, um, yeah. I'll actually hop into my desktop now. All right, so now we are on my desktop. And as you can see on the left side of your screen, I do have four files in total. So the first one is the Windows 11 ISO leak image file. And that's what we are going to be using to update our Windows 10 to Windows 11. But more on that in a little bit. The second file is called the app razors rest.zip. Inside of that zip file, there are going to be some DLL that we are going to be using to put into our Windows 11 installer image bootable drive. That's going to make more sense in a little bit as well. Third file is called Rufus. It is the program that we are going to use to make the bootable drive for our Windows 10 and Windows 11. And the last one is called the Windows 10 21H1, which is currently the latest version of Windows 10. ISO file and then that is what we are going to install on our partition part on the drive wherein we're going to update it as well later to make it Windows 11. So that kind of sounded a little confusing but we are on the right side of the screen right now and instead of using the disk management tool on Windows I will be using Paragon Hard Disk Manager and use that to actually partition and resize my hard drive. So I'm going to be using my second hard drive here instead of my main drive. But this is also applicable to those people who only have a single drive. You can partition that OS drive or system drive into, of course, another partition. And that's where you are going to install Windows 10 and then later update into Windows 11. This way, you don't have to actually ruin your whole machine. So if you get the wrong ISO file, which I don't know how you would be able to because I linked something in the description down below or get any bugs and glitches, you're not going to ruin any of your system drive, everything would be intact, your programs, your files, your documents uh, on your main machine or your main OS. So that is why I am dual booting instead of installing it right above or overriding my system OS right now, which is Windows 10. Now, as you can see, we have Rufus on the screen and what we are going to be doing with Rufus is, of course, select the device, which is going to be our bootable drive. So you're going to do it twice, but with a different ISO. On the boot selection, you have to click select and either select the Windows 10 on your first USB drive and then the Windows 11, that ISO file for your second USB drive. And those are your two bootable drives and that's everything that you have to do on Rufus. Oh, and yeah, remember the app razors rest that zip. All you have to do is double click that and then go into your USB drive wherein you have made the bootable drive for Windows 11. You go into sources and then you go drag or open up the app razors on that zip and then drag all of those files in there and click replace the files in destination. And then now you're ready to also use this as for updating the Windows 10 on the dual boot partition. This is kind of confusing, but you guys will get it. So after creating your partition and making your bootable drives, you just got to boot into your first bootable drive, which is the Windows 10. Install that normally. And now you're going to be having a dual boot system. Now, don't be scared if you have two OS or two boot drive running in your machine. What would happen is every time you boot Windows or boot your machine, it'll ask you which boot drive you would want to boot with. So make sure you select the one that we just fresh installed Windows 10. So then that we can update into Windows 11 and still 
of course, non-destructive for your main machine or your main boot drive, which is still on Windows 10 with your installed programs and files. So here I just have the freshly installed Windows 10 running and then I have inserted my bootable drive of Windows 11 and then run the setup.exe for that one and then it'll start checking for my PC for the update and then you kind of just press next, next, next until it boots to Windows 11. You'll see it in the speed, time lapse, whatever thing. So you just got to wait for it. It's going to restart a few times and then after everything is done installing, you're going to be popping up with Windows 11. All right, so now we are done installing Windows 11 and we're going to take a look at it, I guess, kind of a first look, uh, whatever you want to call it. But I did install some programs already like OBS, which is what I'm using or the program that I'm using to actually record my screen. And of course, the camera or the C920. And then I installed uh, some Adobe programs and of course, Steam. And I relocated my Steam games to, you know, the D drive or my other drive. Anyway, again, this is installed on a hard drive not on a SSD, but so far it is stable. Taskbar settings, you can still put the whole alignment into your left if you don't want it in the middle, but I'll keep it in the middle for now or in the center because that's kind of the Windows 11 kind of trademark right now in the middle. Anyway, OBS is just working fine. Nothing different here. Settings, as you can see, it's a little rounded, but you know, the check marks kind of different. There's the animation for both zooming in, zooming out. Of course, Steam still hasn't changed. So uh, the maximize window still kind of just pops or snaps. It doesn't really animate. Uh, for the Windows Explorer, it looks normal. But if you middle click your mouse into any of the programs, nothing will really happen. Maybe that's just because this is kind of a leak build and maybe a very early version of Windows 11. So I wouldn't really suggest you installed this already on your machine. Anyway, uh, browsing. Browsing is good. You can just open Chrome. You can actually just install programs. You go to YouTube. I actually have seen Linus Tech Tips Windows 11 earlier today running on a virtual machine right around. Oh no, no ads, no ads. Right here. Installing in a VM instead. Uh, I don't know why, but they did kind of figure out something in the end. But I think my tutorial earlier is a lot easier than doing the KVM and then doing it into a virtual machine, placing it on read and stuff, whatever. Anyway, I think everything just works all right and okay. Uh, Ashley, I'm going to show you Winver Windows 11 version developer. Developer version. It's not even a beta version or an insider build. It's a developer version. Uh, I don't know, version developed. I don't even know. Anyway, US build or OS build 21996.1. And uh, yeah, Microsoft Windows. What more does like you can do two new desktops according to the monitor. And apparently this can be disconnected and reconnected. And then Windows know where to place your icons. Currently, I don't have any. Uh, mounting is cool. 7-zip works better. Now let's try to run some games. So we can try running Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege right now. And we're going to check if it just works fine. So let me just right click Steam, open R6. You saw the rounded corner. By the way, you can do dark mode. So you, we can go to personalize and then we can go to colors. Then we can go dark. There you go. I uh, just still a little bit of bugs here and there, but I think it is because I have it installed on a hard drive that is quite old. That's why it's doing some of those bugs. Anyway, if I go back to the window Explorer, as you can see, new icons, not really much on the ribbon bar or menu bar. Anyway, uh, new icons and stuff, but that's pretty much it. So while we are waiting for Rainbow Six to actually load up, we can check the notification bar. I have no new notifications. I can expand this. It has a frosted glass look. And uh, I don't know, I think uh, the stuff looks a little, just a little bit more nicer. You can have widgets, but you have to be logged into Windows that I can't show you because I actually most of the time don't even bother to actually log into Windows. Anyway, I think here it is, R6 loading up. It says, uh, I think, Xbox Game Bear is still here, so Windows G. I think that's the uh, that's the bottom prompt for it. Again, I have this thing installed on a hard drive. That's why not everything is snappy. But after this, I might install it into the SSD or my main drive, and I might daily drive it. But I'm still checking out all the programs that I use if it's compatible with Windows 11. So uh, yeah, just kind of 
waiting for R6. It is loading. I am on display capture, so please don't expect much about the performance, but I will be doing a proper head-to-head, -head, the Windows 10 versus Windows 11 kind of performance, if that would work again in the same machine, and I might dual boot it in the SSD itself instead of booting one in SSD and HDD. But anyway, performance-wise, oh, we got a pack. We can open it. Why not? Maybe Windows 11 is lucky. Give us a black. Never mind. <laughs> it's gonna be a legendary headgear on a character that I don't use. On operator, I mean. Anyway, that's just that. It works fine. I can confirm. Quit the desktop. Now let's open up maybe Premiere Pro 2021. Oh yeah, that is the start menu now. Um, things are pretty normal. They look a little different, you know. They're a bit more squished, smaller icons. But I'm pretty sure you can still put the old start menu, if I am not mistaken. You can go task manager and then you can search for start. And then you can do... Oh, I think you can't. Can you? Huh. They might add that back. The widget looking thingies on uh, start menu. Anyway, this is Premiere. And just do a random one, random, let's just call it random, just to see if it works fine. It works fine. No biggie. So I guess it's pretty much the same Windows 10, but refined in a way. As you can see, there's more stuff in here. Just a little bit of different stuff, nothing much really. So I might give it a shot as a daily driver, but yeah, I'm just going to continue using it for a bit for like maybe two, two, there's... I don't see any of my rectangle thingy selector on desktop. That is weird. I'm dragging it with my mouse. Anyway, again, uh, that is it. Hopefully it did help you if you want to install Windows 11. It is a very quick one and it is a very easy install. So um, yeah, I guess I will be ending the video here. Again, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to follow me on my socials if you want to see me try out some stuff with Windows 11. Suggest a program if it works or not. Uh, you can hit me up on Twitter and then I'll post something on Twitter. So uh, check out my socials on the description below. Again, linktree.com slash Alan Avila would uh, put you through a site that has basically all of my links to whatever platform you want to check if I have one. My grammar is not on point. Anyway, I'll see you guys in my next video and have a great day. Goodbye.